Hi, I'm Veronica Yerchak. I'm a graduate student in the Hooks Lab in the Department of Entomology, and my research looks at new ways of using cover crops and living mulch combinations for both weed and insect suppression in sweet corn. Cover crops are most commonly used in field production where they provide benefits including improved soil quality, reduced erosion, nitrogen fixation, and weed suppression. Previous research in our lab has looked at using cover crop residues and living mulches for weed suppression in the production of different vegetables. And we found that these residues and specifically red clover living mulch do successfully suppress weeds. Um, the cover crop residues by creating a thick surface residue that blocks light and then the red clover living mulch by also blocking light and then also competing with weeds for space, nutrients, and water. Unfortunately, we also found a significant yield reduction resulting mostly from competition between the vegetable crop and the red clover living mulch. We also found that even though the red clover successfully suppressed weeds between the vegetable rows where it was growing, we also had increased numbers of weeds within the vegetable row because in order to remove the red clover from the planting rows in the spring, those areas were strip tilled, which mixed up the soil and caused a flush of weeds to come up right around the time that we were transplanting the vegetables. So to try and improve upon this system, my research uses combinations of cover crops and living mulches to try to eliminate tillage altogether and also reduce competition between the crop, which in my case is sweet corn and the living mulch. So to do this, I'm looking at weed suppression provided by four different cover crop combinations, a bare ground control treatment, where the cover crop residues are tilled into the soil before planting, a no-till treatment where dead cover crop residue remains on the soil surface all season, and then two treatments combining a red clover living mulch with either forage radish or rye. The no-till and conventionally tilled treatments are planted with a cover crop mixture of crimson clover, rye, and forage radish in September. And then in the spring, just before the sweet corn is planted, the bare ground treatment is mowed and all the residue disked under. In the no-till treatment, that cover crop is terminated with a roller just after sweet corn planting to create a dense surface residue that would ideally reduce weed emergence. In the living mulch forage radish treatment, red clover and forage radish are planted in a repeating pattern such that two rows of Red clover are followed by three rows of forage radish, and this pattern continues throughout the entire plot. And the idea here is that forage radish is a cover crop that naturally dies as temperatures drop below freezing in winter. So the radish would grow during fall and early winter and then die later in the winter. And this dead cover crop residue would suppress uh, early season winter annual weeds and then decompose and leave a clean planting row in the spring for the sweet corn without having to strip till. Similarly, in the red clover rye treatment, two rows of red clover are followed by three rows of rye. And so following planting in spring, this treatment is rolled, resulting in sweet corn rows with a weed suppressive rye residue between the rows of red clover. The red clover then continues to grow as a living mulch between the sweet corn rows throughout the growing season, suppressing and outcompeting any weeds that would otherwise come up. And finally, each plot is further subdivided into two subplots where half of the plot is treated with an at planting application of conventional residual herbicides. And so within this system, I measure the ability of the residues and the living mulches to suppress weeds by measuring the amount of time to manually weed each treatment, as well as the total accumulation of weeds in areas where weeds are not removed in each subplot and seedling emergence, plant development, and total yield are also measured in all of the different treatment plots. And then in addition to weed control, I'm also looking at how these different cover crops contribute to insect natural enemy enhancement and then pest control. So flowering living mulches have been shown to increase the numbers of predatory and parasitic insects, which feed on pollen and nectar during certain stages in their life cycle. And so because I have a flowering plant growing between the rows of sweet corn, I'm looking to see if there are more predatory and parasitic insects in these areas. And then if we see a reduction in corn earworm damage and sap beetle damage in the ears. And lastly, because red clover is biennial, meaning it will continue to grow for a second year, I'm also measuring weed suppression provided by the different cover crops a second year. So this fall, the sweet corn in these plots will be mowed and the cover crops allowed to return and grow all winter and into next spring. And then they will be terminated in a similar way and soybeans will be planted where the sweet corn is currently growing. And we'll again measure how these different cover crops and living mulches contribute to weed suppression. 
So far we found that living mulch works as well as an app planting application of residual herbicides for suppressing weeds and we're still in the process of determining if there are impacts on yield and ear quality. The study will continue for one more year at which point we'll publish our final results and if you are interested in trying red clover living mulch on your farm you can contact me at the email below.